Hello there, this is an update for the McCullough read along. And we have just finished the first month of the read along. We were reading this book, The Johnstown Flood. It was the first book that David McCullough wrote and it was a disaster, definitely a disaster. The book itself, I mean, it was well written. It wasn't a disaster, but the flood was just terrible, just terrible. And uh, there were thousands of people who died in that flood. Uh, the first few chapters of the book weren't too bad because we were learning about what Johnstown was like and what the people were like there and what happened with the, the dam, why the dam was so weak that it actually uh, collapsed. It. And so what happened really was that it was an earth dam and there were some water release valves in the dam originally, but then the tower where the person stood to release the water in the release valves, I guess it burned down and the release valves themselves, well, when he sold the property, he took them with him. He dug them up and took the release valves with him and sold them for scrap. And the new owners decided to put a lot of water back into the dam. And they did not hire experts. They did not put in new release water release valves. So it wasn't done properly. And there were other problems with the dam. So what really interested me about this book, when I was first reading it, we live in a place with a river running through our town and upstream from our town, there were some dams that were built for energy and uh, they were going to be taken out. There were some lawsuits about 20 years ago and it was decided that the dams upriver from us were going to be removed and it just so happens that in between the time I first read this last year and now, those dams have been removed. And it really gave me a bit of comfort knowing how long it took for the Johnstown Dam water to go from the dam, from the, from the dam itself, to the town of Johnstown. And it took about 45 minutes. So I figured that the, the dams upstream, if they actually broke and caused a flood while they were being removed, it would be hours before that water actually reached our community. So I did not think we had much to worry about at that point. And it was a relief to know that. Behind the dam, there was a lot of silt dirt in the water built up and then all that silt went down our river and our river turned brown and people complained and the ecosystem was terribly messed up because of the dam removals upriver. Um, there's been a lot of unrest in the community because of that because at first all the fish died and you know if all the fish died then the birds won't be able to eat the animals that depend on fish won't be able to eat. And then there's other animals that live in the river, like turtles and, I don't know, other things, otters. But eventually it clears out. I'm not too worried about it. I think eventually the ecosystem will be restored. And um, I guess it had to be done sooner or later. But that's what was going through my mind when I was reading the Johnstown flood last time. And this time I'm more concentrated on just the terror that the people went through, the terrible things that happened to the people there and what the, the children went through and who lived and who died. There was just a lot of casualties because of this dam. So then I wondered, oh, was David McCullough going to be writing any more disaster books? Because it was a very well-written disaster book, but uh, as a matter of fact, the answer is no. I was reading the 
next book is The Great Bridge. And I read the introduction, and I will read you a part of the introduction that I thought was kind of interesting. I'll read a paragraph. The disaster at Johnstown was one that need never have happened and a powerful reminder that it can be terribly dangerous, even perilous to assume that because people hold positions of responsibility, they're therefore acting responsibly. My book about what happened at Johnstown had no sooner appeared than the publishers, publishers other than my own wanted me to write about the Chicago fire or the San Francisco earthquake. I was already being typecast as a disaster author, and I wanted no part of that. What I wanted, what I needed, was a story wherein the principal characters took on something big and admirable and difficult and did it right. So he wrote about the building of the Brooklyn Bridge, and that's what we're going to be reading for the next two months, if you care to take on this challenge. Um, this time I'm not dividing it by page numbers. Uh, there are 24 chapters in this book, so I thought that was easily divisible into two. 12 chapters for the month of September and 12 chapters for the month of October. Approximately, is that two or three chapters? That's about three chapters a week. Yeah, so we can do that. And I'm about to start this book tomorrow. I've already read the introduction. I often read the introduction early. Um, yeah, we can do that. So I don't know how many people read the Johnstown Flood with me this last month. But uh, if you did, thank you. And I look forward to reading more books with you in this read along in the future. And by the way, if you are not yet connected to the Voxer group, you would need to get the Voxer app and have a username and send that username to me. Um, maybe you could put it in a comment here and I would add you to the group. And those of you who are on the group, thanks for signing up. And I hope we'll have a lot to talk about during the coming months.